Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. Ooh I like big balls. Yeah I can't deny. We're still talking yarn balls right? <laughs> Without further ado let's get on with today's crochet tutorial. Let's begin. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. This is the Crochet Santa Gnome. Today I'm going to be making a spring version because or well, filming with black yarn is kind of impossible on its tutorial. So I'm going to make mine uh, oriented for spring. You're going to need a bead or a felted ball that resembles a nose. It could be any color that you wish. And I'm going to be stitching my way through at this little project. This is only five, uh, five inches tall. It's using Red Heart Amigurumi yarn. I don't have that on hand. So I'm going to substitute with a four millimeter size US7 or it actually size G. US 7 or G and it'll be a Karen one pound yarn that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to give my gnome yellow rubber boots and I'm gonna make uh, the rest of it green and we'll still make the beard and etc. So I'm gonna work my way through this. Um, you will require some hot glue or something to stick the nose. Uh, sorry about your luck. I'm not gonna demonstrate a hot glue gun on camera because I know how that goes. <laughs> Anybody that has ever seen me use a glue gun you know how dangerous I am with that thing. So and I'm lucky I don't burn down my house. So we're gonna work our way uh, strategically. You'll need some fiber filling for this, some polyfill. And then something uh, like at the bottom to weigh down the gnome so it will not fall over. So I have little pebbles and stuff that I use and I just put it in a little baggie or you can put it in some saran wrap and just do it so that it's at the bottom of the boots so it'll give it some weight. So that's kind of our goal today and let's begin the journey right now. So let's begin with the body of this gnome and you're gonna use the color A whatever you decided. This is the color black um, that it's having that is stating. So I'm just gonna be using a yellow as I mentioned and so we'll be starting off that. We're gonna be doing continuous rounds so we will not be doing any slip stitching so that you will not see any seam lines. So you will need a stitch marker or spare yarn that you can move up so that you can keep track and check it off on your list. Let's begin the body right now. So let's begin the body. We're using the color A. In my case I'm gonna substitute so I'm gonna make him have yellow pants and yellow boots. So we're going to start with a slip knot and I'm using my four millimeter um, hook and if you know anything about yarn this yarn is Karen one pound which requires a thicker hook but the fact is that I want amigurumi to be tight so I'm lowering my hook size so that the stitches are tight. So I need you to chain two and then let's move on to round number one next. The next thing you're going to need is a stitch marker like this or you can use a plastic piece if you want to but I find the yarn's just fine. You can use those. And what I want to do is second chain from the hook I want to put in six single crochet. So keep it nice and tight. So one, two and go right up over top of that straggler when you hit it. it. You'll run right into it. You don't have a choice. So this is three, four, five, and six. And let me talk about some uh, let's do the sixth one here. Let me talk about some uh, assumptions I'm gonna make in this video. At the end of each uh, round you're gonna have the last stitch. I'm going to put in my first stitch marker here. So at the end of each round I'm asking you to put in your stitch marker. Just move it up. So when I go to move it up I'm just gonna continue just to take the next piece and just put it through the last stitch of each round so you can keep a count of it. So when you go to start this you'll know exactly where the end of the round is instead of guessing. So now I want to move on to round number two. To keep this tutorial also brief I'm going to give you the set of instructions to go all the way around and I am going to ask you to meet me at the next round. So I'm gonna have you do the entire round and then meet me back and we'll start a new fresh round. So in this particular one we're going to start a continuous revolution for the very first time. It is the sixth stitch back if you don't see where it is and I always count to verify. So there's just one, two, three, four, five and six. The sixth one back and the first one is always hardest to get into the very first time you ever do it. So in each stitch all the way around I need you to apply two single crochets and on that last stitch make sure that you do move up that stitch marker. So two uh, single crochets into each and I'll be right back in a moment. So in the very last stitch just move that stitch marker up so that you can see it next time and you'll do that each and every time you're coming around. 
Okay, so I'm gonna assume that you're gonna do that going forward. Let's check that off in the list and move along in the pattern. Round number three. Here's what we're going to do. The very next stitch is going to be one single crochet and then the one right after it is going to be two single crochets and that's your repeat pattern for the entire round. I'll repeat that one more time just so you get it. So the next one is one by itself and then the next one has two into the same stitch. Please do this all the way around. Move that stitch marker up and we'll move on to round number four in a moment. Round number three is now complete. The very last stitch of round number three was two into the same one. That's just a matter of keeping the count so that wasn't anything special. Round number four we're going to begin in the first two will be one single crochet each. So one and two are by itself and then the next one has two into the same stitch. So one and two share the same stitch. So let's just talk about the repeat one more time. So that one and two are by itself and then the next one has two single crochets into the same stitch. Please do this all the way around round number four. Number four is now complete and now let's move on to round number five. Round number five's repeat is going to be three single crochets by itself. So one, two and three and then the next one has two into the same stitch. So to repeat that the next three are by itself. So one, two and three by itself and the next one has two. Please repeat this all the way around for round number five. Let's move on to round number six. Here's the repeat going all the way around. The first four are by itself. So we have one, two, three and four and then the next one has two into the same one. So to repeat the sequence the next four are by itself. So one, two, three and four by itself and the next one has two. Please repeat that sequence around. This is round number six. Let's begin round number seven. The sequence is as follows. There's gonna be five single crochets in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five and then we're going to have two into the same one. So the sequence to repeat is five by itself. So we have one, two, three, four and five by itself and then two into the next. Please do this all the way around. This is round number seven. So the next round number eight what we're doing is we're doing the back loops to cause this material to naturally fold to have a flat bottom. So starting in the next one you're just gonna do a single crochet in the back loop only. So when you go into both loops that's a stitch. If you go into the loop that's closest to you front loop and the other loop that's in behind. So if you dive in the middle that's a back loop. So you want to just do one single crochet in the back loop only all the way around right to the very end. So you don't need to keep a count at all. Just apply one single crochet in each of the back loop and this will provide a line that will naturally fold the material. Please do round number eight now. In round number nine we're now going to use both loops once again and do one single crochet in each. This is the last time we'll be using this color for now. I believe it's probably the last time until we do mittens um, on this character and so just one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of the round in a moment. So I'm coming all the way around to the end of number nine. So what you wanna do is have your next color ready. Could be the red, could be any color and when you go to apply the very last stitch that's in the stitch marker that you see you're gonna pull through and you're gonna stop and you're just going to attach the another one the next yarn. I always do a slip knot just for security reasons and I pull through and therefore the yarn is good to go. So therefore I'll cut this yarn here and I'll use a tapestry needle to put that in. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So just grab a tapestry needle really quick as quick as you wanna go. <laughs> so I wanna just kinda pull this out for a second and I wanna secure it in the back side. So this is the inside of the character. So just take it through some of the strands that are on the inside. Don't let that needle fall to the other side of the project so you don't ever see this and then just secure it into position. So go back and forth in different fibers a total of three times. 
and once you go back and forth three times it's good to go. So any kind of loose ends that you will have on this that's the way I wanna show you so I don't need to show you again. If you did go over top of the straggler like I did then you can cut that and if you didn't just grab that tapestry needle and also get rid of that as well. You can also leave it on the inside as well. It doesn't matter because you will never see it. So let's move along now to round number 10. So make sure you move that stitch marker up even though you change the color. You're gonna need to keep an eye on that. So the next three rounds are gonna be quite simple. Just one single crochet in each. As you're starting this new color just when you start you're just gonna do go right up over top of the straggler just bury it underneath it. And then just do a few stitches and then toss it to the inside of your project. So as you pass your stitch marker you're going to check it off in the list. So I need you to do three rounds of this color all the way around and I will be back at the end of number 12. So this is 10, 11 and 12 and I'll be back on 13 in just a moment. In round number 13 I'm gonna show you a technique that is used in amigurumi and also hats and stuff that you don't want a seam line that happens when you do a decrease. So how they do that is that in round number 13 you're gonna do the next five single crochets by itself. So let's just do the first five. So one, two, three, four and five. Then we're gonna do a single crochet two together but watch how I do it. You're gonna come into the first one and you're just gonna grab the front loop only like that and then you're gonna rotate your hook just kind of shift it and catch the next one and come up from the bottom as well. Then you're gonna yarn over and then pull through the two. And that's a two together and this cr uh, prevents any kind of seam line that happens when you do a decrease. So let's do the next five in a row and I'll show you again. So we have one, two, three, four and five. And if you like the original way that uh, de decrease is done then do it that way. So just come up, put the next two together. So come up the first loop only and rotate it and capture the second stitch from the bottom as well and pull through and then pull through two and that's a two together. So please do five single crochets in a row and then two together and keep doing that and I'll meet you at the end of number 13 in a moment. So now just finished 13. So the very last stitch was a two together if you're keeping in the right sequence. So another round number 14 is like the 10th and it's just one single crochet in each stitch around. So please do round number 14, one single crochet in each. I'll be back in a moment. Let's do round number 15. Please listen to my instructions carefully because I don't need to make you count so many stitches. So you're going to put the first two together. So just put them together how you feel most comfortable. And then you're going to count 16 single crochets in a row. Then the next two are together and then the final 16 are, are going to be in and that will take you to the very end. So you're only decreasing basically twice in this entire round. So please do that and this is round number 15. 15 is now complete and now you're moving on to round number 16 which is just one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Please do this. This is round number 16. Round number 17, listen carefully. The first two are going to be together and then I need you to count the next 15 single crochets and do that. The next are going to be together so two together and then the last 15 will be in here. So please do that all the way around and I'll be back at the end of this round. This is number 17 and have your stuffing ready in just a moment. So now what I want to do at the end of number 17 is place a little baggie with some rocks from my laneway and I'm gonna place that inside so that it provides weight to the bottom of this. Ideally it'd be better if the rocks were not wet but I'm leaving it a little bit open so it can breathe. Then I'm going to use some polyfill and continue to stuff this character as I am see fit. So now I'm gonna have you can uh, stuff this as you go and when you go to stuff this make sure that when you go to stitch that you're not capturing the stuffing inside the stitches itself because it's noticeable. So just keep it a little bit down and out of your way as you're working throughout the next part of the process. Let's move on to round number 18. Let's begin number 18. It's the same as number 10. It's just one single crochet around in each stitch and I'll be back in just a moment. So number 18 is one single crochet in each. Number 19 is another decrease so listen carefully. The first two are together 
and then you are going to count out 14 single crochets and then put the next two together and then the last 14. Please do this all the way around for round number 19. We're now going on to rounds number 20, 21, 22, 23 and 24. So what we're going to do in each one of these rounds is just one single crochet in each of the stitches and just move up that stitch marker as you go. So just check out that off your list every time you do a rotation and get those five rounds done and I'll be right back in a moment. Okay let's move along now to rounds number 25, 26 and 27. They're each different so let's begin. We're going to do a decreasing so you're gonna wanna make sure your stuffing is caught up and begin. So listen to my instruction. You're going to put single crochet two together, the first one and then you're going to count out 13 single crochets then two together and then 13. Please do that all the way around for round number 25. Let's begin to do number 26. So this decrease is actually more sequential. So it's more often. So we're going to put the first two together. So single crochet two together. And then you're going to do one single crochet in the next five. So we have one, two, three, four and five. And then the next two are together. And then the next are five. So one, two, three, four and five. Please do that same sequence all the way around. So single crochet two together and then five. I'll be right back. Number 27 is our last decrease with this color and then we're gonna be changing it at the end and I'll show you how to do that again. So single crochet the first together and then you're going to do one single crochet in each of the next two. So we have one and two and then single crochet the next two together and single crochet the next two on their own. So one and two. Please do this all the way around for round number 27. So I'm coming all the way around and I'm about to do my last stitch. It's just one single crochet but I'll show you. I prefer the color lace for my own skin color. This is the lace in Karen One Pound. You can choose any skin color that is is most suitable for you. You decide. There's no judgment here. So what we have is that you're going to do a slip knot and you'll single crochet the very last one but you will not finish it and you will switch over to the new color and finish it off. Like I showed you before I want you to snip the green color off and then just use your tapestry needle just to hide it in the back end and then you're going to begin the head in number 28 in just a moment. Starting with your new color you're just gonna do like around number 10 one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. As you're beginning the new color just place the straggler down on top of the line and capture it in for a few stitches and then toss that into the center inside the remaining of that. Okay so it's out of your way. You don't need to trim it. You can just keep it in and continue around one single crochet in each stitch for the head all the way around round number 28. In round number 29 we're gonna start getting bigger again and so starting in the very first one we want to begin and the first two are one single crochet each and then the next one has two into the same stitch. So one and two. So your sequence then if you recall it's two single crochets in a row. So one and two and then two into the next. Please do that all the way around. Round number 29. Round number 30 we're gonna get bigger again and so this time there will be one single crochet in the first three. So one, two and three and then the next one has two into the same stitch. Okay so the sequence for 30 is three single crochets in a row and then the next one has two into the same one. Please do that all the way around round number 30. The next five rounds are all gonna be the same so they're going to be one single crochet in, in each stitch all the way around. So please do this for round number 31, 32, 33, 34 and 35. So it's one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Move up your stitch marker as you go and please do those five rounds now and I'll meet you at the beginning of number 36 in a moment. Okay my five rounds are now complete. I'm moving on to round number 36. We're going to do a decrease and so we're gonna start off then and we're gonna do one single crochet in the next three. So we'll do one, two and three and then we're gonna do two together. So the repeat then all the way around is three in a row. So we have one, 
two, three, and then two together. Please do that all the way around. Get your stuffing caught up if you haven't already done so because we're gonna start decreasing pretty soon right to the very end. I'll be right back. The next three rounds, 37, 38, and 39 is just one single crochet in each. Move your stitch marker as you go and we'll do that. So rounds 37, 38, 39, please do one single crochet in each stitch around. Let's do round number 40. You're going to put the next two together and then after that the next two together and you're gonna continue to repeat that all the way around. So continue to put two together all the way around. This is gonna seriously decrease the top of the hole so make sure you get your stuffing uh, updated before you complete this uh, this one and this is round number 40. I'll be right back. Let's do the final round for this section and you are going to do two together and do any final stepping as well and then you'll do two together and you'll continue to do that all the way around all so it's two together all the way around and I'll be right back in a moment. At the end of round number 41 I want you to just pull the loop through. You're gonna have a small hole so make sure you pull out your stitch marker at that point. Just kind of give it a good fluff. You'll have that small hole. Put this through a tapestry needle and you wanna collect the remaining stitches that are here. This is gonna be underneath the hat anyway. So you're going to just collect and you're gonna pull all at one time and it will pull that shut. Okay, let's pull. See, it doesn't take much. So now I want you to just weave in the ends. So just tie it in a knot at some point which is I'm gonna do it now. And then I'm going to go inside the project and just back out to somewhere else in the head. And just ever so carefully when you put it back in just a slightly different spot so it doesn't look like it's a stitch out of place. And then back up to the top. and make sure when you do that it doesn't misshape it and then just back one more down. And then I go it through a portion of the head and then that's where I trim. And then reshuff and this is what it looks like. It kind of looks like a bowling pin but this is the shape of the body and we're going to be moving on to doing the arms next. So let's begin to do the arms. I did one off camera just so that I have it and so what I like to do is whenever I do one arm I like to match the second arm exactly to it. So even if I'm missing counting or whatever um, I use this as my model for the second. So when I go to position this on the character where we changed right here at the gloves then I would wanna position this in a way that if it was on the character that it would just be so that join was underneath if you wanted to do it like that or straight down. Okay, so let's begin to do the arms. You're going to use um, the body color and we're going to begin that next. Let's begin the arms and let's start with a slip knot. Keep a long tail so that you can sew it to the shoulder of your character. So you're starting at the shoulder working your way down. Chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and join it to the very beginning one to form the ring and we're going to complete. So that will be the opening of there. So you can lightly stuff as you go. It's your call. I didn't but you can determine to do that if you wish. Let's begin to do round number one. To do round number one you'll need that stitch marker once again and you're just going to start off and you are just going to just chain one just to get yourself started and you're going to do the first six. So the only six that's here. So let's just leave that long tail out of the way. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, and six. We'll take you all the way to the end. So I want you to put in your stitch marker there so that will signify when you're going around. Again you can go around as many times as you wish but the pattern has a certain amount. And let's now move on to rounds number two all the way through twelve. So two all the way through twelve is just one single crochet in each of the stitches. There's only six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is where you're going to start. 
and so you're just gonna, it's gonna be a little bit fiddly in your hands for a few revolutions but as you rotate around make sure that you move that stitch marker up. I don't think I need to show you each and every round at this particular point because you've already done the body. So just continue now for rounds number two all the way through 12. Just continue to circle around. Make sure you have only st six stitches on the first revolution around and then that'll help you get started and then move up your stitch marker to help you keep count if you wish and I'll be right back in a moment. So I've just completed my rounds and I used the first one. If this is my second time around I used my first one as the model. So this is what I want to apply. So I'm gonna start with the mittens and so the mittens are only three revolutions of the new color. So like I showed you before just securing in your ends when you go to change color. Just going to continue to make this work and you're gonna do three of the final rounds with this color. Okay, so we're gonna do that and I'm gonna be right back in a moment and we're gonna put these aside and we'll use them later. So please do your three rounds and then I'm gonna show you how just to fasten off and I'll be right back in a moment. Okay, once I get my three revolutions done of this color I'm going to fasten off and I'm just gonna use my tapestry needle just to close in off the top of that hole. So just like we did the top of the hat or the head so far. I haven't done the hat yet but we'll get there. You're just gonna kind of pull it shut. And just have it tie into a knot somewhere that's gonna be pretty easy to hide. And etc. So you're gonna continue to do that. The more you weave it in and out too, the more it gets stuck and it will never probably come out on you. So that's it and we're going to make sure you do two arms. Unless you wanna do one, it's up to you. And we're going to move on to the hat next. Let's begin to work on the hat. So using a long tail because you use that to sew it to the character and you're going to create a slip knot and begin. And we have the former ring so we're going to chain 36 to begin. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 35, 36. It's pretty big right? But once you start spinning this around it's really not as big as you think. Make sure that this tail is not or the it's not twisted and you're just going to slip stitch to the very beginning and pull through and through to form the ring. And don't interfere with the strand, the long one. Let's begin round number one and make sure you have that stitch marker ready so that you can do the continuous rounds. Let's begin. We wanna make sure that our count is right the first time so we're going to begin by chaining one and we're gonna do a single crochet in the same one as the space and staying on the back hump of the chain going all the way around. What I want you to do is to make sure that you get one single crochet in each. I want you to verify there is 36 be before you get all the way around and then we're gonna work in a continuous circle after that and I'll be right back. So just continue to work around the ring. Once you come all the way around I did verify off camera that I have 36 and make sure that this ring is not twisted between uh, before you start the next round, round number two. So you're just gonna pull everything nice together and make sure that this is not twisted in a weird way and we're going to begin round number two and three. Two and three are both the same just starting in the very next stitch that's available to you. It's the 36th one back if you need to count it. I've already done it so um, you just do one single crochet in each of the stitches. Move the stitch marker up as you did before and please do rounds number one and two. One single crochet in each. Okay let's do the fourth round and we're now going to start decreasing stitches. So we're going to put in single crochet first two together. You can do the same technique as I showed you on the body. So put in the first two together and then you're going to do one single crochet in the next four. So one, two, three and four and then repeat the sequence. So you're gonna put the next two together and then single crochet the next four. Please do this all the way around for round number four. Okay so now I'm back all the way around. Rounds number five through 11 are going to be one single crochet in each. That's a total of seven rounds. So please now do rounds number five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Please do that now. I'll be back here on round number twelve in a moment. Okay this is gonna be like the body for round number twelve. So listen to my instruction carefully. The first two are going to come together and then you're gonna single crochet the next 13 and then two together and then the final 13 and you'll do that all the way around for round number 12. I'll be right back. 
Number 13 is also a decrease. So listen, you're gonna put the first two together and then you're going to do the next 12 and then two together and then the final 12. Please do this all the way around. This is round number 13. Number 14, please listen. You're going to put two single crochets together and then you're gonna do the next 11 single crochets then two together and then the final 11. Please do this around for number 14. Number 15, you're going to put the first two together and then you are going to do the next 10 in a row then two together and then the final 10 and I'll be right back. This is number 15. Round 16, you'll put the next two together and then you're going to do the next nine and then two together and then the final nine. So please do this around for number 16. Number 17, another decrease. So you put the first two together and then you're gonna do the next eight single crochet then two together and then the final eight. Please do this around for number 17. Round number 18, another decrease. This is the final decrease just for a little bit and you're gonna put the first two together and then you're going to single crochet the next seven and then single crochet together and then the final seven. Please do round number 18. Round number 19, 20 and 21 is just one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. So please do those three rounds now. One single crochet each for 19, 20 and 21. I'll see you on 22 in a moment. Let's do number 22. We're gonna do another decrease to start. It'd be helping if I actually catch my stitches. <laughs> Okay, so we have that, the two together and then you're gonna do the next six in a row, two together and then the final six and I'll be right back. Number 23, another decrease. So you put the first two together and then you're gonna do five single crochets in a row and then it's two together and then the last five. Please do this now. This is round number 23. Let's do 24 all the way through 28. It's a total of five rounds. It's one single crochet in each and please do this all the way for 24, 25, 26, 27 and 28. One single crochet each. I'll be right back. Okay, I just finished all the way to number 28. 29 is the final decrease before the very end of this and we still have like quite a few rounds to do after this. So we're gonna put the first two together and then you're gonna do the next four a single crochet and then the next two together and then the next four. So do that and I'll be right back in a moment. This is number 29. Okay, so here we go. The very final of this is several rounds. So it's gonna be rounds number 30 through 49. I wrote it on a sheet of paper so I can check it off as I go. And it's just gonna be one single crochet in each. If you wanna lightly stuff this, it's easier to do it as you're going than it is to try to um, stuff it later. So that's something that I will leave in your capable hands to decide. So please do now rounds number 30 all the way to 49 and then I'll be back on the 50th round and we'll secure. And I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm now at the end of this. So it's the 50th round. So now what you're going to do is that two together, right? And then one single crochet the next. And you're gonna continue to do that around. So single crochet, um, two together and then one in the next. Please do this all the way around, round number 50. I'm now at the end of the round and I'm at number 50 so I'm gonna just trim my yarn. And like I did with the top of the hat, you're gonna take out your stitch markers. You're just going to seal this. I don't think I need to show that again. So just uh, collect the open hole. Make sure that you have any stuffing that you wanna stuff. I stuffed it partially the way so that I could get the height and then this is not stuffed right in here. So I'm gonna collect my ends and or collect my round and pull that together shut and that will be the end of the hat. And I'll be right back in a moment with something. So new. I'm just now moving on. I got my hat, I got my arms and now we're gonna do the boots. I actually thought this was part of the boots but in actual fact this is part of the top of the boot and the boots are going to be extended on here. So this is kinda neat. So I'm learning as I'm going. So let's move on to the boots. I'm going to be using the same color so I can have some uh, yellow galoshes and let's begin. Let's have our stitch marker handy so that you can count your revolutions and use the color that you wanted your boots. In my case it'll be yellow. So let's begin and we're gonna start off when you're gonna chain two and let's begin round number one. Round number one, you're gonna go second chain from the hook, the very first chain that you started with and you're gonna put in six single crochets. So one, two, three. Go right up over top of that straggler to hide it. This is four, five 
and six this is continuous revolution like we have already been doing. So please put in your stitch marker so that you can count it and that will be round number one. Let's move on to round number two next. Round number two you're going to go into continuous revolution. So you gotta go six one back. It's, that's the first one. I always count it out anyway even though I'm experienced. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I always like to make sure because your counts matter. So you're just gonna apply six um, sorry in the six stitches you're going to apply two single crochets each and then make sure you move that stitch marker up on the last stitch that you apply. So two single crochets in each stitch around. I'll be back at the end of round number two. Round number three let's go through the sequence and it's gonna be one single crochet in the next single crochet and then two into the next and you're gonna do that all the way around. So the sequence is one single crochet in the next and then two into the one after that. Please do this all the way around round number three. Round number four here's your sequence and you're gonna put one single crochet in the first two and then two into the next one and two. Okay so the sequence is the next two are by themselves and then two into the next. Please do this all the way around for round number four. Round number five here's the sequence. The first three are by themselves so one, two, three and then two into the next. Okay, so the sequence is one, three by itself. So one, two, three and two by itself or two into the same one, sorry. So there you go. This is round number five. Number six. So let's begin and you're gonna do four by itself. So one, two, three and four and then two into the next. So the sequence around is the next four by itself. So one, two, three and four and then two into the next. Please do this all the way around for round number six. Round seven and eight are both the same and it's just one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Move up your stitch marker as you pass and do rounds number seven and eight now. In the ninth round we want to start a decrease. So you're gonna put four single crochets in a row and then you're going to do a decrease. So you're gonna do a single crochet two together. So you need to do that all the way around. So four by itself and then two together. Please do that all the way around for round number nine. Number ten we're going to do another decrease. So here's what you're going to do is you're going to do the first three are by itself. So one, two and three and then the next one is two together. Please do that all the way around. So three by itself and then two together. I'll see you at the end of this round number ten. Let's begin the eleventh round. In eleventh round we're going to decrease again. So we're going to do the first two are by itself. So one and two and then single crochet two together and you're gonna do that around. So two by itself and then two together. Please do this around for round number eleven. So now we're going to begin number twelve. But you have to make sure that you stuff lightly with the beginning with the weighted stuffing and I'll be doing that next. I probably have way too much stuffing in this thing. <laughs> I'll do that and I'll be right back. So number 12. So I have it lightly stuffed <laughs> if you call that light and we're now going to do single crochet two together all the way around and you'll be collecting those and do that all the way around. So I'll be right back in a moment. So two together single crochet. And I'll see you back here in a second. So now I wanna leave a long tail. We're gonna cut that. So now I'm just gonna pull up. So it's suggesting to us and I'm not sure I can do it with my particular sample here but um, cause I stuffed it with rocks. But what you can, what they're suggesting to do if you can do it just take the tail end and I'll try, I'll try ramming it through. <laughs> and what they want you to do is they want you to form the shape of the boot. So the tops of the, the tops of the boots. So you just wanna go down and see if I can wiggle it through. Oh I can get it through and then come out through the bottom. And what this is going to do is it's gonna pull that down and I can take up my stitch marker as well. So we're gonna pull that down so it'll form like the, the boot. And then so you come back up, grab another section of that last round that you just did take your time just keep pulling on it and then jump on down and then keep on going up and down in that formation all the way around. I'll be back in a moment. 
So once you think you have it done enough, I think I do and it's actually more like a puck now, hockey puck. And I'm going to just secure this end in and I'm gonna weave off the ends. So we're gonna get ready to start assembling our gnome and we wanna get it so that it's gonna look awesome. So we still have the beard to worry about but I wanna, I wanna assemble my gnome first because I need to know how long my beard's going to be because I have improvised with my yarn and your gnome could be a different, completely different size depending on the yarn you chose as well. So we'll make that determination in just a few moments. So let's put our boots onto our character. So if I hold it up for you, it looks like this. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're kind of keeping things center. So I'm going to go into the top of the boot. I'm using a separate strand and I'm going to pull it through and I put a slip knot on the other side here so that you can go through there and it will help lock it. And you can throw the tail end on the inside of the boot if you want to. You can also weave it in if you feel that inclined to do so. Once things are ready to go, put this back down on top and then just start somewhere and just come up to the bottom of the, the body and then back down into the boot. And you're gonna go all the way around in that formation and put the two together. So please do that and I'll be right back. Once you've gone all the way around, then I need you to secure, just make a little tie here and then I want you to weave the tail end to the inside of your character. Cute. Okay, so let's begin and continue our journey. The next thing I want you to do is that I want you to locate between the 35th and 36th round. It's in the head. So the head when we started it was round number um, 28 so you can count there and what I want you to do is put a stitch marker here and when we apply the beard, the beard is actually gonna be really high so when the hat goes down, the it'll be over top of the top of the, the beard section and therefore it'll be well hidden. So make sure that when you do this you have what you think is going to be the right side of your work. Just look at it, look at your stitch work and determine that and that's what you have to do next. So locate that position for the beard and we're gonna move on to the beard next. So here's my goal. I wanna create with Bernat Toasty and it's using a really cool color and it's got a transitioning kind of natural into it and I wanna make the beard kind of look like it's aging so it's called taupe. So I'm going to just take a strand and right where I've, I have taken my measurement is kind of the point and I wanna have it so when I put it down, it's gonna be on top of the table and I wanna do the final trimming later. Once I know this position, I'm going to take that strand and pull it to the same point. This length now is the master template of what I want. So what I need to do is 40 strands of this. So just putting it to, with the ball yarn, just kind of pull it through and when it gets close to the end, instead of just trimming it all the time, you don't have to, you can trim it later. But And if you want to trim it, you can. Just reach up and you can create all these little strands that you need. And of course, if you don't wanna use that many, you don't have to and if you need more, then obviously you know what to do. So I need you to create 40 strands. You can follow the information if you are using the Red Heart Amigurumi size and this is a great way to customize. So I will be right back and I'll have that done next. So now that I have my 40 strands cut, you can do one strand at a time or several. Using that marker, that's where you want to concentrate on so that you can have it cover over so the hat will be in time. So I did a gnome the other day and I was really close to the line of where the hat was kind of come down. So I wanna make sure that this stays up so that the hat ridge is well below where this is joining. So all I'm just gonna do is just randomly now just pull these strands through and I wanna have them divide equally in half. So just kind of equally half and let it just droop on its own. Depending on your application, for myself, you know, I don't have kids, I'm not worried about this kind of stuff falling out, but you can just apply a little bit of sewing at the end of this in order to, like at the, at the line right above it. I'm not going to, but you can, and that's something that you can decide to do. So when it's down, you'll notice that it's way too long, but that's the point, so I can do the final trimming later. So what I want to do is continue to add this beard in and just have some fun. So I'll be doing that for a bit and I'll be back. 
So here's my scary looking gnome so far. Looks like cousin it. <laughs> so that's what I have and so I did a first layer and then I kind of peeled it back and I did a, a couple um, rows below. I did around two to three strands at one time and I don't wanna trim anything yet because I'm gonna get my hat ready to go. So I'm gonna get my hat and let me just see if I can zoom you out and talk about a hat. So let's do the hat and I am going to focus on the seam line, this to be at the back and I'm going to slide this on. So what I want to do is that when you notice that you did the hat, you notice that it kinda comes in like this. It doesn't come the other side like that. So it naturally wants to turn. So I'm gonna put that so then the flat, the flatter side is on the front of the, the head. So I was thinking the hat might have been too big but after you put on the hair, I'm gonna slide that on. And what I want to do is slide mostly down the head of this. And I'm putting the hair underneath. And what I want to do is that I want to position this and so this and what I'm gonna have to do is a little peekaboo at some point and I'm gonna have to have the nose pop out the front. So you may wanna test your nose if you have one. You do that, right? So what I want to do is once you have that done, just take the long strand of that hat and sew it into position. So just put it on and work your way all the way around it. And this will help secure in the hair as well. So just in and out of the, the head work. And just kinda make sure that the strands of the hair kinda naturally fall onto itself and just work inside the head to attach this hat. And I'll be right back in a moment. When you come around and it's in the front of the character, you do want this to be pushed up a little bit because the nose looks like it's just popping out the top of the hat or the bottom of the hat like this. So when you go to secure that, just keep in mind that that's what you wanna do with that. So if you sew this flat down, that will never happen. So you may want to just jump across and just leave it open. Like that, so I'll be able to do that. I know it's hard to see in your angle and just keep on attaching the hat as you go. So what I want to do now before I put the nose on, I wanna shape this hat. So you can put wire or like a pipe cleaner inside and you can also do fun things with this. You might wanna be more creative with it and just kinda have it turn in a, in a kinda fun way or what you can do, which I probably will do to be honest with you, is that I may just sew the tip just to the back here to force it to kind of come down or I can just naturally let it hang too. So you can decide what you want to do with that. So let me just um, make a decision on what I want to do. And I like doing all these kind of positioning stuff that's kind of fun. I'm kind of looking at it from an angle. Kind of stretching it out a little bit just to make it a little more pliable. Just gonna pick it up and see how it naturally falls. And you know what, I'm thinking not to, now that I, once I stretch it a bit, it's a little more pliable. I think I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> how lazy is that, right? So anyway, but it does look good, it's kinda fun. So thank God it's actually weighted, so that's a really good tip. So now all I gotta do is that I still have to sew on the arms. So I'm going to just position the arms on the side of course and I have an idea that I want to try. So when I go to sew on the arms, I'm gonna use this and right where this is joined, I wanna have it so that it's facing the interior like this so it's not facing out. And so I'm just gonna attach it at the shoulder lengths and I'll go from there next. So with the tapestry needle, have a decision whether you want to position it in a different kind of way. It's not movable once it goes on and you're just going to sew just underneath the shoulder, like at the shoulder length. You're just gonna attach and just go in and out of the sleeve there a few times in order to get it to really hold. and I want you to do that with both arms. So please do that and I'll be right back in a moment. So what I'm going to do is that, this is a bubble heart by the way, there's a tutorial for that so I'm gonna put that on later. So what I want to do is just split the beard roughly about halfway 
so I can see the face underneath. And I wanna take the felted ball that I have and I just wanna just capture a little bit of it here with the strand. This is cotton yarn. And what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to capture the face in behind. So I wanna do it so when it goes in, it actually makes it look like it's lifting off this hat a little bit. And I'm going to just literally tie that into position. And if you got better ways, of course, you can always think of better ways. And then I'm just gonna carefully cut the loose ends down. And the beard will cover anything that's not right anyway. Okay, and then you're gonna reposition everything back in to position like this. Okay, so I'm not quite done. What I'm going to do is that I wanna position this heart. So I'm just gonna do the same thing with the cotton yarn. Just be very careful about it. And I wanna have my character holding a heart. Why not, right? Just because it's a Santa gnome doesn't mean it has to be one. So I just wanna come into the inside of the hand. I love all these final touches. And then I'm gonna hold the heart just right in the tip, just slightly behind the heart. And it's just enough to get this thing to tie. You could also use the same color of the hand and go right through the hand if you wanted to. My goal is, is not to um, do too much work with this. Just It's just extra fun. And once you have that done, you can safely just cut it right down to the wick. Get rid of that. And the other hand, I wanna hold that heart but not at the same position. So I'm gonna go in the other hand, just the palm and capture it. And I wanna hold the heart on the bottom right here. Therefore it doesn't look like the gnome is holding it at the exact same spot. It's gonna do that. So now he's holding the heart or they're holding the heart, doesn't matter. And what I want to do now is that I wanna uh, move the character so it's hanging off the table so that these loose ends can go down. So you can hold it up in the air if you want to, if you want. Okay, and so now I'm just gonna dangle it over the table and I'm just gonna trim the first lengths that I think I need. Don't go too short too quickly. And now I wanna kinda of fluff them up. I may want, or you may want your boots to be showing. Now these kind of things when you have accessories like it's holding a heart, you can always position things and put a, a yarn tacked in behind to prevent the heart from spinning around. It's up to you on how you would like to do that. And yeah, so I'm actually gonna make it a bit shorter. I'm gonna go right above, just above the boot area. And then make a determination if you love it or not. And I actually, I think I'm pretty okay with that. So just give it any final touches that you have. Um, just tack anything that you would like to tack down and just do any kind of final trims. And this would be how you would do these Santa gnomes. They're really quite cute and I'm really, really, happy with it. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.